Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event um, where we sh uh, share anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. We have a national audience here nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, we do a variety of things, um, presentations, interviews, um, sometimes little mini training sessions, whatever we can think of, anything that may be of interest to librarians anywhere. Um, any types, any kinds, we are the Library Commission, the state agency for all libraries in the state of Nebraska, so we will we'll have topics on anything and everything you can think of. Um, we do these so shows live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are recorded, so if you're unable to attend us live here as we are this morning, you can always watch all of any of our recordings that are out there on our website. Um, this morning I have next to me uh, Laura Johnson, who is the uh, Continuing Education Coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And she's got, she, we have the second of her three-part series about your government online. Yeah. Anything and everything that you need to know about, about um, government websites, I guess. And well, everything. that was, yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And today we're going to learn about executive, legislative, and judicial branches. So I will just say, hand it over to you, Laura, and take it away. Well, thank you, Krista. Um, hi, everybody. This is Laura Johnson. Um, we're going to talk about .gov, the government on the web, today. Uh, we did the first part of this on August 22nd, so that is an archived session, and that covered the um, cabinet departments. They are part of the executive branch, of course. Um, and then we're going to do the third part on October 24th, where we're going to cover quasi-independent agencies. There are hundreds of them. Um, we only have an hour, remember? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try to fit it all in. Um, actually, fitting it all in is something I need to talk about. Um, I have put these websites on slides, rather than doing them live, pretty much in the interest of speed, so we can get through a lot of them fairly quickly. Um, also, in the interest of speed and your sanity, um, I made a list of all the links of the things that we'll be looking at today. I sent that list out last night to everyone who was registered for this program. Um, if you weren't registered, um, give me an, drop me a line later and I'll be glad to send it to you. Um, so don't worry about trying to write down URLs. It will make you crazy. Yep. And we will also at some point get all of those into the Commission's yeah. Delicious account that we use for any links that we have yeah. um, during our shows. So later mm -hmm. that will be done as well. Yeah. I thought the handout would be helpful oh, if people nice. wanted to take place. notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so anyway, uh, we're going to talk today about the federal government. As we know, the gov federal government does have three branches, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. We've covered a big piece of the executive with the cabinet. We're going to finish up with the executive today, and then we're going to cover the legislative and judicial. Um, so last time we did cover the cabinet, the 15 cabinet um, departments. A lot going on in those places. Um, but So today, the legislative and judicial branches and the White House. Um, I want to start by saying that one of the places you can find a lot of information about the government and about the structure of the government, you know, who does what, is the United States Government Manual that is online, uh, venerable printed um, publication, and it's now online as well. Then we also have USA.gov, which is the government's um, official web portal. So this also has a search, um, and you can find agencies here, too. Uh, so those are places to start if you're looking for information from the government. Um, so here, let's cover the president and the office of the president. Um, and those things are mostly at whitehouse.gov. Of course, it's famous that the whitehouse.com was a porn site. Yes. Um, but the whitehouse.gov. is always good as a teaching tool yeah. as far as um, critical thinking, evaluating of your web Absolutely. sources that you find when you go online. Yes. The White House got, is very good about uh, letting you know what the president's doing. Um, and um, 
it, the website's a big one. It covers a lot of stuff. So, for instance, on, under the briefing room, the president's speeches and remarks, if you hear that he spoke on something, you know, a couple days ago, go here and you'll find him. Um, the presidential actions. It used to, I can remember a time, I'm dating myself, I know, but I can remember a time when we'd try to find the Thanksgiving proclamation every year. And it was just awful because, well, this was pre-internet. Um, now, all the proclamations and things are Is right there. Is that the one where he pardons the turkey? Yes, and, okay. uh, and talks about, you know, we're all thankful and what a great harvest and, you know. Um, so anyway, that's now right here under presidential actions. His proclamations, his memoranda are right there. Um, also the legislation, the stuff that's pending, the stuff that he's already recently signed, and then the stuff that he's vetoed. So you can get a pretty good rundown um, on the whitehouse.gov. Uh, uh, the vice president is also uh, here on this website. Um, and as are Michelle Obama and Dr. Jill Biden. Um, but I, I didn't bring up their pages. Um, the executive office of the president is here. Now, the executive office of the president was actually created by Franklin Roosevelt in 1939. It's uh, headed by the White House Chief of Staff. And it's essentially the people who... Um, who advised the president? Oh, there was one thing I wanted to say about the vice president that I didn't know. I don't. I think it's more of a, more than a fun fact to know and tell. Um, the vice president can make military academy nominations uh, from anywhere. All the senators and I, House representatives, I gather, can make them from their state, but the vice president can make them from anywhere in the nation. Hmm. So that's a good thing to know, I guess. Um, and he does preside over the Senate, of course. The executive, okay, the executive office of the presidency, I'm sorry, I got distracted there. Um, they list about 454 employees in their uh, 2011 report. And they have a budget of oh, roughly $700 million. Um, but they really, they're... They're doing a lot, but mostly they're advising the president. Um, some of those things that some of the entities that advise the president that are part of this executive office, you'd have heard of, the National Security Council, which is the president, the vice president, the, um, the secretary of state, secretary of the treasury, uh, secretary of defense, um, the head of the joint chiefs, the chairman of the joint chiefs. So those are the people that... Um, advise the president on security. Then the Office of Management and Budget, which is a very important um, managerial or administrative role in that they kind of keep a lot of programs, they keep them going, keep, um, they sort of watch over them, they help prepare the budget. Um, so the OMB does do a lot of things. And one Thing that I, it's kind of quirky, I think. Um, the North American Industry Classification System used to be the standard industrial classification. Now it's NAICS, North American Indu Industry Classification System. Uh, and you'll find it if you look on the web at the Census Bureau site. But it's actually overseen by the Office of Management and Budget. That's who comes up with this. Um, classification system, and if, if you're looking for information on a particular industry, you kind of need a NAICS code. But, you know, it's interesting to know that OMB are the people who are actually in charge of it. Um, another thing at the White House, the Council of Economic Advisors, which um, is rather small, but uh, the actual council, but then they're supported by a lot of economists. Um, a chairman and one member right now on that council, but then a bunch of uh, supporting econom economists. Um, so the Office of the Presidency, that White House site is interesting, um, not just from a, it, it also kind of, I don't know if you'd call it recreational. There's things about the different rooms. There's a virtual mm -hmm. tour, um, you know, because it is one of the great 
landmarks and public buildings in America. Um, but um, for you know information on what's going on, that's kind of a little rundown. Um, now we'll go to the legislative branch, the uh, people that make the laws. Um, and I, I thought this was interesting because it kind of, well, I don't know, maybe shows you the relationships of things. Um, that Apple Green building, in the, this is a map of a small section of Washington. The Apple Green building in the middle is the U.S. Capitol. This house sits in the chamber on the south end and the um, Senate sits in the chamber on the north end. Uh, those kind of ready purple buildings north, um, I guess that'd be northeast of it, are the Senate office buildings, the kind of, um, I guess, mauve sort of buildings. South of it are these house office buildings. The orange building that's really in front of it is the Senate, and then those three green buildings there are the um, Library of Congress. The um, White House is, oh, close to a mile, um, a little bit. Um, you see that's west and a little north of the Capitol. Um, but I thought it was interesting because they kind of make a big deal about visiting the Capitol, the visitor center, that kind of thing. And in fact, the U.S. Capitol does have its own website. Um, I thought, uh, well, a fun fact to know and tell that George Washington laid the cornerstone of the U.S. Capitol on September 18th, 1793. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. so yesterday Almost was its anniversary. <laughs> um, and it is, of course, a very beautiful building. They have a big visitor center. You can go see the um, our legislators in action. Um, and it's an interesting website of itself, but it's, it's mostly really for tourists. Um, then the Senate and the House have their own websites. The U.S. Senate, of course, um, 50 or 100 representatives, two from each state, each from the 50 states. Um, and the first thing, of course, is a directory of senators. And I looked up our senators from Nebraska, Mike mm -hmm. Johans mm -hmm. and Ben Nelson. They both have their own websites. I'm assuming all the senators have their own websites. Um, and then they have a lot of information how to contact U.S. Senators. If you want to contact your Senator, they tell you kind of how to do it, not just what their addresses are, but sort of how to address the envelopes and what you need to do and that kind of thing. Um, here's the organization chart for the 112th Congress, and we're going to talk about the numbers of Congress in a little while. Um, the Vice President, of course, does preside over the Senate. When he's not there, there is a President pro tem uh, who presides. They're the political party leaders, the majority leader, the majority whip, and the minority leader and the minority whip. And then there are the committees. Now, committees are extremely important. Um, they have 20 committees, 68 subcommittees, and four joint committees. Come on, baby. Oh, try again. Anyway. Um, here's the list of the committees that uh, they put up here. You can see them a little better. Um, I chose one of these as a um, sample, so I just went um, with the Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry. It was the first one, although I did look at several, but I thought the little tractor was cute, and that's really why I chose this one. Um, but they do have committees, and it's committees that kind of do the big work of um, with the legislation. Uh, they talk about here how a bill becomes a law, and this is several pages long. But essentially, uh, bills get drafted, they get introduced, they get sent to a committee. And the committee actually does a lot of work in terms of um, they select a small percentage of the bills that they see for actual consideration by the um, legislators. They um, they ask uh, for written comments on the measure. Then they hold hearings. 
then they perfect the measure through amending and kind of rewriting, and then fourth, they send it back to the floor of the, the chamber where it will be debated and voted on. So committees really do a lot of the work. Um, committees are chaired by a member of the majority party. Um, and the majority of the members of a committee are also the majority party. Uh, so I guess we're very uh, partisan on those things. Um, the um, Senate does explain how a bill becomes law, but frankly, if you need to something <laughs> quick, uh, it's very quick and pleasant. It's about three minutes. The Schoolhouse Rock, How a Bill Becomes a Law on YouTube. I recommend it. Um, That's how I learned when I was a kid. Yeah. I mean, yes, it it only hits the high spots, but it hits the high spots. So if you're interested in that, I, I would check out the a Schoolhouse Rock. That, in fact, was something I found, especially with the uh, legislative and judicial branches, that they do have a lot of information about what they do, but that some of the information that explains what's going on is from other sources, uh -huh. and it's better. And there's a lot of it on the web um, explaining uh, the, about about dot com was very useful. Um, so they know that other places are already doing a good job of it, so we'll yeah. just let them do it. No reason to you know try and well, I think so. Either that, or they are not um, they're not prepared to be reflective. Oh, yes. Um, but at, in any case, uh, sometimes the outside uh, sources of information about what was going on might have been a little bit better. Um, they have this big thing on enactment of a law. This is quite long. Um, but, you know, it, it goes into detail. They also, at their site, have a list of active legislation, what's currently being considered. Uh, the Senate has, I thought this was interesting, what they call their virtual reference desk, where you can ask questions, but they also have some canned um, things. For instance, here's a key to legislative citations. So they tell you when you see a citation for something, uh, what those abbreviations mean, which is very handy. And I can see, you know, where you might mark this for being a, something you could go back to if you encounter legislative citations fairly often. Um, okay, then we move from the Senate to the House. The House of Representatives, 435 members, um, spread uh, proportionally by population through the states. Um, Nebraska does have three representatives. Here's the directory, and I took the Nebraska uh, entry and kind of pasted it on there, so we left out A through M, so you'd see um, kind of what the entries look like. And then, of course, each of the representatives does have his own uh, website, so here's Congressman Lee Terry. Um, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry and Congressman Adrian Smith. Those are the three congressmen from Nebraska. Um, if we'd been in California and had many, many more congressmen, I probably couldn't have listed them all. But with three, I thought we'd just list them all. Uh, they also have a find your representative um, utility where you put in your zip code and it shows you who your representative is. I thought this was interesting because this gave a map of the legislative area. Um, Lee Terry, for instance, his area encompasses Douglas and Sarpy counties, and that's it. Then um, Jeff Fortenberry has kind of, and, and that's from the northern border of the state to the southern border of the state, a swath um, that you know Lincoln is kind of in the middle of, and then Adrian Smith covers the rest of the state. Wow! Um, and that's by population, so you see where the population density is pretty clearly. Um, the House has a clerk of the House, which I'm sure she does a lot of work. But the thing I thought was interesting is she offers a kids in the house cool. um, several pages on for kids specifically about the house, which I thought was, um, you know, something you might want to remember uh, for teachers or, you know, just because you're doing something in your library with kids. Um, 
the House does have committees just as the Senate does. Um, and they do a lot of the, the work, the heavy lifting. Um, what goes on in the Senate and the House is recorded every day in the Congressional Record. Uh, this is available online, but it's also, I think, still printed. This is what it looks like. Um, and the laws they make are then put in the U.S. Code. Um, something is a bill until it becomes a law. And then those laws are codified because a law may change a number of places in the code. So they go in, into the code then and, and put the laws in where they belong in order. And of course, this is a huge publication um, and mostly used online now. Um, but it still, you know, is a printed publication if you need it. Um, one of the better places to find out about the U.S. Congress is not really from the Congress exactly. It's from the Library of Congress. They have a service that's called Thomas. Thomas is named after Thomas Jefferson. Um, it was launched in January of 1995. The 104th Congress wanted them to uh, offer um, access to uh, legislative information. And they've done, well, a magnificent job. It really makes you proud to be a librarian. I just get all excited about this stuff because um, I thought Thomas was fabulous. Um, you can go into Thomas and go to the About Thomas, which I think is really worth your while. Um, really look it over so that you kind of have an idea what's there when you need it. Uh, look in the help screens. Those are great because they have the FAQs. Um, what you can find on Thomas, you can search for bills that are currently being, you know, um, acted on. You can look to see what's been going on in Congress. You can look at the congressional record. You can look at their schedules and calendars for what's going to be happening committee information, and remember those committees are really important, uh, presidential nominations, treaties, government resources, and then they do have material for teachers specifically. So um, I thought Thomas was just fabulous. You could spend hours, happy hours, doing it. The FAQs frequently asked questions, and one of them was about the years associated with particular Congress. Now, you know, we know that congressmen members of the House of Representatives, serve two-year terms. So every two years, there's essentially a new Congress, even if most of the people who are members have been returned. Um, so they tend not to count years, but to count Congresses. Uh, every Congress starts in an odd-numbered year, and then so we're going to, we're just about getting to the end of the 112th Congress. Next year, the 113th Congress will start because we're going to have a big election and we're going to elect all of our uh, representatives. Of course, it's also a presidential election year. And um, senators who serve a six-year term, about one-third of them um, are elected, have an election every Congress. So um, you kind of have to think in Congresses instead of in years for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but it was nice of Thomas to explain it. Um, you can search for bill summary and status. And I did go ahead and search here. I searched for things where Ben Nelson had, uh, one of our senators, had um, sponsored it or co-sponsored it that had become a law. And remember, most of the stuff that's introduced in um, the legislation legislation is not does not become law doesn't make it yeah um, which is probably just as well <laughs> um, but so I looked and then I had this is what the um, results look like <coughs> excuse me um, a lot of links to other information but they will explain it kind of to you. So I thought that was really nice. Uh, I just, I was blown away by Thomas. I thought it was fabulous. Um, it also does have the, uh, access to this publication. It's a PDF, 
how our laws are made. It's 65 pages long, wow. which is beginning to make Schoolhouse Rock look even better, <laughs> I think. But, I mean, if you need detailed information, here you go. Um, then some other things that are in the legislative branch. The legislative branch, of course, is mostly concerned with making laws. So they're not like the, the uh, cabinet departments where they're concerned with having programs and running, you know, different services and stuff um, and carrying out the laws. They're making the laws here. But one of the things they do have oversight over is, of course, the Library of Congress. And um, started by, uh, essentially, uh, Congress bought Thomas Jefferson's library to start the Library of Congress. Um, and they do so much. There is so much going on there. It is, it is, I think, really interesting. Of course, one of the things the Library of Congress does is it's the U.S. Copyright Office. If you need a copyright, of course, some things are copyrighted essentially whether you sent them into the Library of Congress or not. But you generally send things in to the Library of Congress to have your copyrights recorded. Um, and they explain uh, that about copyright and, um, in detail. So um, if you're interested in copyright, they don't talk here a lot about how copyright is applied. Um, things like fair use, there are other places where they'll discuss that at more length. But here is how you get a copyright and what a copyright is and how long they last. That's much more complicated than it used to be because generally they last, it's the author's lifetime plus I think 72 yeah, years yeah, that, yeah. Um, or 70 years. But it, it depends. It depends when something was copyrighted before the law changed or after the law changed and uh, kind of what it is and whether they were joint authors and so you, you need to if you need to know that look it up because because as I said it's a tiny bit complicated um, but the Library of Congress also has their their online catalog um, of course not a card catalog anymore it's online but you can go to the Library of Congress's catalog and get records mm -hmm. um, so this is for catalogers. This is um, it's a great resource for oh, fabulous. Um, free mark records if you need yeah. them. Yep. Um, they also have their cataloging and acquisition section uh, who do a whole lot of things. Uh, remember, I mean, cataloging is enjoying this gigantic change right now to the RDA standards. Um, and LC has down, you know, how they're implementing RDA standards, um, what they're doing. Uh, with cataloging, and they're sort of the de facto National Library, although they are not really a National Library. They are the Library of Congress, mm -hmm. um, but they're doing a lot with cataloging. Then they also have, they have the Center for the Book, and that is holding the uh, National Book Festival this coming weekend, and that will be, I think, on the Mall, right there in yep. Washington. Yep. Uh, it's going to be very exciting, a yes. lot of authors attending. Uh, there's a really cute poster online here if you want to download it. We have staff on their way there. Yes, the we do. <laughs> yeah. Deborah's going. So, um, you know, the Center for the Book, uh, the National Center for the Book is here, and it's uh, there's some cool stuff on this website. Then they have the American Folklife Center, which is, uh, you know, kind of keeping track of some of the um, uh, history and culture and uh, music and things. Um, folk music. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. They have a lot of special collections that they show online. I didn't pick them all out because I could have done a whole hour just on the Library of Congress, I promise. Um, but I thought they were, it was interesting. Then of course they do have the uh, National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped um, and those then have state um, libraries as well. The one here in Nebraska is here at the uh, Nebraska Library Commission, but they have the talking right book and yeah, us. right downstairs, uh -huh. talking book and Braille service, um, and um, that's a free national service um, for people. They also had something that I thought was fun today in history, and so today in history there was victory at Saratoga. Hey. I thought this was cool, and it's the kind of thing that you know. 
you could put a little box on your website and link to this. Mm -hmm. And people could go there every day for a new fact, a new... It's the kind of thing you see in uh, little features you see in newspapers, mm -hmm. and I think it'd be great on a library um, web page. So um, I thought this was certainly worth mentioning, and it was neat that, that they were doing this. Um, okay, then another thing that is part of the um, legislative branch for under the U.S. Congress is the Government Printing Office. Now, the Government Printing Office is not the only place that distributes um, government documents, but it's the big one. And so uh, the GPO, the Government Printing Office, their catalog used to be the monthly catalog that would come out, literally come out and print once a month, but now you can search their catalog for things, uh, for documents. Um, and for instance, I searched for, um, what did I search for here? Oh, this is a list of the uh, depository libraries because the, the government printing office has a program whereby libraries uh, who will make the documents available publicly can have government publications. And some, actually I don't think that many depositories are complete depositories and get everything, but a lot of depositories get some um, publications, and these are the 13 that are in Nebraska. You'll see the Nebraska Library Commission is one of them. Um, so if you need government documents, um, here are some of the places that you might want to look. Um, the Government Printing Office also puts out Ben's Guide to U.S. Government. Um, and again, this is a really good kind of explanation of like the legislative process, things like that. Um, and I, I always like to mention the stuff for kids because I think it's it's good to be aware of that stuff. Um, then there is the government bookstore, and this is an online bookstore now. Um, I don't know if it's quite Amazonian or not, <laughs> but um, it does have its best sellers listed, and um, will sell you government documents. Remember back in the day when you had to have a deposit account. Uh -huh. And you sent them money, and they they charged your deposit account. Well, things they've modernized. <laughs> things have kind of changed, but um, they do have the online bookstore, so it's easy to get government documents. And it really is amazing what they put out. Also, you know, you do want to be aware that when sometimes you hear about fabulous uh, reference books and they're reprints of government documents. And of course the government documents are going to be considerably less expensive. Mm -hmm. So you always want to check and make sure that, you know, if you can get a government document. Find a different source. Yeah. yeah. They don't have to, yeah. But of course they're keeping up with the times too, so they also have their federal digital system where you can get mm -hmm. digital um, copies of things. Like the congressional record is now available online you can search it online. Um, there are um, how-tos. In fact, there's a user's manual um, for this if you want to use the federal digital system. But, um, you know, it's, it's worthwhile, again, to check into to make sure that if there's stuff that you'd like to get there, that you're aware of it and you know kind of how to search it. So when somebody comes into your library, you can help them. Um, so that's kind of the legislative uh, branch of the government. Um, they're basically making laws. Um, there are a few other things, too. I haven't included every single thing. For instance, they, they oversee the U.S. Botanic Garden. Um, but I didn't put that in because time, you know. And so now we're going to go on to the judicial branch. And of course, the judicial branch is... Um, the, fed, the executive branch, um, um, what am I saying? They, they make the laws work, the, the legislative branch creates the laws, and the judicial branch then um, decides, you know, the legalities of things. So, 
Um, we do have a system of courts in the U.S. that have federal jurisdiction, and that's a key thing we're going to talk about in a minute, too, jurisdiction. Um, the U.S. court system, there are 12 um, circuits, and then there are, uh, I think it's 94 districts. So, for instance, Nebraska is a district, and it belongs to the 8th Circuit of Appeals. Um, as far as justices, there are nine Supreme Court justices. They're part of the U.S. court system. There are 179 judges in the Court of Appeals. There are 677 judges in the district courts. And there's nine in the Court of International Trade for a total of 874 judges. Now, really, when you think about it, to be nationwide, that's not a lot of guys and gals. Mm -hmm. um, who are the judges in our um, federal court system. Here is where the federal courts are in Nebraska. Their home is in Omaha, but there are um, offices in other locations. And it's not just courts. You'll see there have probation offices and um, other kinds of offices, uh, free trial services available at several places around Nebraska. But this is where the courts are. Then, as I said, Nebraska is part of the Eighth Circuit. Oh, well, here, District of Nebraska's website. Um, they have their own site. And we're part of the Eighth Circuit, which is headquartered in Missouri. Um, and that circuit includes Arkansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North and South Dakota. Um, so that's the Court of Appeals. And then there's this whole thing about jurisdiction, and I wanted to really show you this. I think this is worthwhile looking at. Um, your state courts are mostly what we deal with. That's most of the laws. Um, oh, actually, there are municipal courts, too. Say a parking ticket, that would be municipal. But bank robbery, that would be state and a patent violation, that would be in a federal court. So what court you end up in depends on jurisdiction, so that it's a terribly important concept. Um, and you have to know who has jurisdiction. Um, as I said, most laws that we deal with, um, that we think of, are really state laws. But the federal courts and the uh, attorneys who, uh, you know, the prosecutors in federal courts are part of the Department of Justice from the executive branch of the government. Um, but federal uh, courts is, uh, well, crimes, um, it interstate commerce, um, securities, um, you know, investment things, patents, for instance, the big uh, Apple case where Apple just sued Samsung about their patents. Uh -huh. That was federal. Uh, international trade, that, that would be in a federal court. So you, you really want to think about jurisdiction. Um, they had a nice, this website, the U.S. Courts website, had a nice thing on educational resources um, that I thought was really worth looking at. It really kind of explained how the court system works. Um, they have this thing about the difference between federal and state courts. Again, you know, jurisdiction is very, very important. Um, then the Law Library of Congress, which is part of the Library of Congress, has a nice guide to law online, the U.S. Judiciary. And they'll tell you, like, where the laws are online. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of how to how to navigate through it. But again, this is not actually part of the court system. This is not part of the court system's website. This is an outside website explaining the court system. Um, but I think it's worth remembering that this is here. Then the U.S. courts do offer like a legal glossary, which I could see would be useful in a lot of cases. Um, so um, you know, you might want to mark this, too. Then, generally, uh, a case that goes to court will go to one of the district courts. And the district court will decide 
the guilt or innocence of a person in that court. Um, a person who is found um, innocent is innocent. Um, the government cannot appeal an innocent verdict. But if someone is found guilty or found neg uh, you know, liable, they can appeal. And then that, if the court finds that there are legal grounds for the appeal, because the appeal can't be, I didn't like this verdict. The appeal has to be, there was something wrong about the way they applied the law in this case. Then it goes to an appeals court, and that would be one of the circuit courts. Um, if the circuit court um, then um, rules and you still don't like it, you can appeal to a higher court. In this case, for the U.S. courts, that would be the Supreme Court. In a state court, it would be the state Supreme Court. So um, the Supreme Court then is the court really of last uh, appeal, kind of. And um, they have their own website. Um, and they do talk all about how they handle cases. Most cases, most people who petition to come before the Supreme Court do not get there. The Supreme Court is very selective about what they rule on. And what they're going to be ruling on is how the law is applied, what the law means. They're not going to be ruling on the facts of a case. Um, a lawyer who wants to go before the Supreme Court has to apply to be part of the Supreme Court bar. You have to have been a lawyer for at least three years and be of good moral character and have recommendations and things. I mean, it's really, it's very serious business and it's a very serious website. Um, they talk about um, the justices, their biographies of the justices here. Um, they even tell you, I mean, it's even a set thing where they sit and what doors they come in. Wow. It's all by uh, seniority. Wow. <clears throat> the closer to the middle you are, the longer you've been there, except mm -hmm. for the chief justice. He gets to sit in the middle. Um, but it, it's people can go visit the Supreme Court. Um, but again, um, it's kind of a serious business. They they ask you not to bring children. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the Supreme Court does have information about their opinions. Um, laws in this country are uh, made in several ways, actually. The legislation that our, um, the Senate and the House uh, put together, then there are um, a lot of laws say, well, this agency will make rules about something. For instance, all the, the um, Americans with Disabilities Act regulations, and you know, they're, they're books full of them, are regulations. They're not laws, but they do have the force of law, and they are generally made by an agency who has been given that power by legislation. But law also happens um, judicially because um, of precedent. Precedent is very important in law. How did we do it before? How have we applied uh, the law in this situation? How have we interpreted things? So Supreme, the Supreme Court's um, opinions are very important because they're essentially saying this is how the law needs to be applied in these kinds of situations. And that comes out in um, a set of books, The Federal Reporter. Um, but they also uh, now, of course, are available online, and some of their opinions are available at the Supreme Court. Um, and so that's kind of the federal judicial system. Um, sometimes some opin opinions of appeals courts, the circuit courts, are printed um, opinions of district courts, rulings of district courts almost never are um, because they're not, they're really dealing with facts of cases. They're not dealing with interpretation of law and how it should be applied. But um, the Supreme Court's um, rulings are very important 
and they do come out and they're compiled um, and they're indexed and that kind of thing. So anyway, that's kind of the um, legislative <clears throat> and judicial branches and the uh, White House. Mm -hmm. um, next time we're going to do quasi-independent agencies um, and I think we're going to have to be pretty selective about them because there are an mm. awful lot of them. Yeah, but it's good to see that all this is online, at least to know yes. that if some of the stuff is there, I can find other things too. Maybe. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, and uh, I think they've really made an effort to try to make um, their their procedures and things open so people understand what it is they're doing. Um, I was saying to Krista earlier that these were very serious websites. <laughs> And I, I don't mean that negatively. Um, they're doing serious business, and they take it seriously, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, I, I think that if you really want an explanation about, they can give you the facts, and they will give you the facts, and they'll tell you why it's important. But somebody else can kind of, give you an interpretation, an analysis of it. So I do recommend, as I said, about.com was very helpful. I think Thomas is fabulous. Um, Wikipedia was, um, I thought, uneven. Some things it seemed to be very good on and some things mm -hmm. it wasn't. So I would, I would be a little careful. Well, not that's, that not that's that it wasn't on good. Wikipedia in yeah, general. It is. It's a good place to start, but you know you might want to verify. Yeah, verifies. Um, you know, see what it's citing as its sources. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and then if you just do a web search, um, you find more stuff than you can shake a stick at, really. <laughs> um there are whole websites that are um, devoted to explaining what's going on. So, oh, does anybody have any questions for Laura about our session today? About the president, well, not the president, but the office of the president. Well, the office of the president, <laughs> yeah. Judicial, legislative, anything. Nothing came in during the session, I see. <clears throat> well, if everybody no. uh, isn't snoring by now. <laughs> no, um, they're all still here. Well, good. <laughs> um, as I said, um, there was the handout with the URLs because, well, it would have been impossible. Um, so if, you know, if you didn't get that for some reason, just send me an email and I will be glad um, to send it to you. I mean, it's just a little document. This isn't a big, big deal thing. Um, and, um, you know, I hope you found a few interesting things here and a few things um, that you will go back and check out. As I said, Thomas is really worth um, spending a little time so you really mm -hmm. have kind yeah. of a feeling for it. Um, because if you're going to use it as a, as a um, resource, a reference resource, it, it is big and I think a little complicated at first. I know so. a lot of libraries do use that as a resource. It's usually oh, yeah. linked from on library websites for yeah. information to find out about the government. This is a place to start. Oh, yeah. I think definitely. So anyway, thank you all. Okay, yep, got just a lot of thank yous there. <laughs> I had a good time <laughs> doing this. I, I hope you did. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Laura. And as we said, um, the third part of this series will be next month, October 24th. Yes. So if you want to come and see the last one that, um, you can um, watch for that one, register for that. Um, and this one's been recorded. The previous one was recorded. It's already up, so you'll be able to watch recordings as well. Yeah, when it's all said and done. Um, so thank you very much, Laura, and thank you everyone for attending this week. I hope you'll join us next week when we have our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, who is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, once a month he comes on Encompass Live and does uh, Tech News of the Month, things that he's noticed that have come up. Um, I bet you'll be men mentioning Internet Explorer. Google that, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, security issues there. But um, he will also be um, having on the show with him Aaron Stanton, who is from booklamp.org, which is a website that um, has to evaluate um, features that make a up a book. Um, you can take a look at that and see 
um, what that's all about. Part of the Book Genome Project is what it's called. So Aaron will be with Michael on the show next week, and Michael will be doing his usual um, techie information. So um, looks like we don't have any last-minute questions coming in, so I think we'll wrap it up for today and say thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for joining us, Laura. Thank you, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.